portion of the country. Is this in year eight? One of the things that's always struck me in Iraq and in Afghanistan is the believability of Washington's partners. You know, the, the government on the, the local government that has been installed or elected as a result post invasion. And it's often occurred to me that what is actually happening is a parallel dialogue. That when Nouri al Maliki from Baghdad or uh, Hamid Karzai from Kabul come to Washington or go to London, they say what they fully understand the West expects and wants to hear. But then when they go back to their capital cities and talk to their cronies and their governments, it's a completely different discourse they're having. Mm -hmm. So they, they say they will honor international treaties. Respect women, sure, we respect women. Why not? You know, the West wants us to respect women, so we respect women. But when it comes to satisfying local demands, Karzai will um, release from prison the, the foulest, the most obscene rapists, uh, drug dealers, um, you know, there's absolutely no concern at all for the rule of law as we expect it um, to be followed. And what is the dominant, the dominant uh, force at work is the local agenda to carve power and resources up as they see fit and never mind what Western expectations are or what undertakings have been given to the West uh, in return for... Um, for uh, reconstruction support. Um, but Crystal, in, at length in his report, he quotes from uh, Abdul Rahim Wardak, and he describes uh, Wardak as insightful. Wardak is the, uh, the uh, Afghanistan's uh, defense minister, and um, who regularly comes out with victories within our grasp type speeches. <laughs> and, and I made the point in that speech uh, in uh, October. What? Why would McChrystal believe Wardak? Why, why, why is he going out of his way to say that he finds this man insightful when uh, eight years in, um, his insightfulness has provided nothing by way of, a, of a, a believable effort or a believable Afghan response uh, uh, to, to the post-Taliban era. It's, um, you know, what I've said, it's, it's, this is more cars I speak, uh, but uh, victories in our grasp from the Afghan defense minister in the current circumstances is laughable. And yet we have an American general saying he finds this to be quite insightful. Mm -hmm. if, if only half of the Kabul um, cabinet genuinely believed uh, the, sort of the, the war act type spiel, and if they'd acted accordingly, uh, uh, the Afghanistan crisis would be behind us. McChrystal uh, believes uh, that all will be well, as he puts it, uh, uh, when there's a new coalition operational culture that he says will connect the, uh, the foreign forces with the Afghan people. But it wasn't, it wasn't the Afghan people who showed contempt for the will of the Afghan people um, last year in the election campaigns. It was their own president. It was their own president and all his Western backers who were aware of what was happening in terms of election corruption. The extent of the corruption in the Afghan election was so obvious, um, and as we know now from the, uh, the uh, stuff that's come out of the United Nations in Afghanistan in the aftermath of the election, they knew what was happening. It was a question of whether they would say what was happening in terms of the, the pre-planning that had to be put in place for the, uh, the incredible fraud for Karzai to ultimately steal the election, which he did. The fact that the, his opponent pulled out at the last minute uh, didn't save him uh, from, uh, couldn't save him. In fact, it was a deliberate effort to lock him in as the president who stole the election. And the way, this, this thing about the understanding of the locals and understanding the local culture 
how things function, uh, dynamics in local communities, um, is so essential to, um, I won't say winning in Afghanistan, but to making progress, and you can measure progress by the, uh, the standards of the locals if you don't want to measure it by foreign forces. But um, the, the admissions of ignorance of the local landscape and, uh, and of the local culture are breathtaking. McChrystal touches on it, and then this week, almost with such a perfect line of coincidences to make you think that it's a con to think conspiracy, uh, we get two reports on the same day, one from London and one here in Washington. In London, Major General Andrew McKay, who led British troops in the south of Afghanistan in 2007 and 2008, um, he says that the armed forces, this is the foreign forces, engaged in fighting the, uh, the, in fighting in Afghanistan, have failed to understand the culture and motivation of the Afghan people, and had failed to adapt to modern conflict. Now, again, you have to keep coming back to this point. This is the start of year nine. He's saying we have failed to understand. He adds that the military consistently fails to understand the motivation of local Afghans which was undermining Western efforts while strengthening the resistance. He says, many of the choices that are currently presented are too stark. Poppy is bad, drugs is bad, wheat is good. You know, you go into a village. Why, why would an Afghan villager believe you when you go in and tell him that this poppy that he can make a small fortune on growing is bad, mm -hmm. but this wheat, <laughs> this wheat that he'll get a tenth of the price for is really, really good. Why would he believe it? Uh, he says, you know, Taliban is evil, but the, uh, the foreign forces are good. Why do they believe that? They, they watch the foreign forces come in and move out, and as soon as they move out, the Taliban moves back in behind them. And the, the incredible thing about life in Afghanistan, especially for, if you think that 80% of the population are agriculture and village-based, their lifestyle, their life expectations are so incredibly simple. They want to be able to get to their fields, they want to be able to grow their crops, they want to get their crops to the bazaar. They're not particularly fussed if their children get to school. They think it would be nice if the boys get there, but they're not particularly fussed, especially about the girls getting there. So that's as, their life is as simple as that. It's the same in, Africa, in Iraq. The expectations of people were terms of life under Saddam, as long as they knew what Saddam's rules were, they didn't impinge that much on their movement in their day, in their personal space on a daily basis. They could get to the fields, they could get to their work, they could get home, they could drive past Abu Ghraib prison and other places like that, and it didn't exist. And they were able to get on with their lives. So if you're coming in to upend that sort of status quo, um, you had to, you had to be believable. You had to bring something that's credible. So bringing a bag of wheat seed instead of opium <laughs> is not going to cut the mustard. That's is that Monsanto wheat seed? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the British general says that the reality is that we have consistently failed to understand that what seemed to us as irrational behaviour is entirely rational. The individual facing tough choices. And as I said on the same day, the highest ranking US military intelligence officer in Afghanistan has called for a major restructuring of the intelligence gathering and distribution in that country, arguing that the prison system is only marginally relevant to the overall strategy. He said that little is being done to fully understand the support for insurgents, declaring that the U.S. That's the support by local Afghanis for the insurgents, declaring that U.S. intelligence efforts are ignorant of local economics and landowners, hazy about who the power brokers are and how they might be influenced, incurious about the correlation between various development projects and disengaged from people in the best position to find answers. I mean, people talk about what's happening in Afghanistan as fighting a war. How, how do you fight a war if your top intelligence man is saying as you go into year nine that that's how your intelligence system is not functioning? 